Pusan, walay katapusan Kibuhat mo We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. Good evening, Father. This mass, in this Mass, we are joined by uh, Father Ben Capulong from our Vicariate of Santa Ana. Also, Father Cara San Juan, the President of Ateneo de Davao University. Father Tony Basilio, Director of the Jesuit Community in Ateneo. Father Eman Kalumpong, uh, uh, the finance, uh, the treasurer of Holy Cross of Davao College. Father Jasper Alfeche, uh, the chaplain of the Holy Cross of Davao College. And Father Kim Lachica, uh, the diocesan clergy of Je the Jesuit. <laughs> the <Diocesan> clergy. <laughs> He's very close to us, of course, like Father Tony. Um, he is the Episcopal Vicar for uh, uh, the religious. So we're glad, my dear brothers and sisters, that we've gathered here in the same way that uh, the, this is the sixth night that we offer the Masses for our beloved uh, Archbishop Nanding Akapalya. To prepare ourselves before the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and, and to you, you my brothers and sisters, that, that I have, have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Fernando 
to whom you committed the care of your family, may we, the manifold fruit of his labors, enter into the eternal gladness of his Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Philistines gathered for an attack on Israel. Israel went out to engage them in battle and camped at Ebenezer, while the Philistines camped at Aphek. The Philistines then drew up in battle formation against Israel. After a fierce struggle, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who slew about 4,000 men on the battlefield. When the troops retired to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord permitted us to be defeated today by the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the Lord from Shiloh, that it may go into battle among us and save us from the grasp of our enemies. So, the people sent to Shiloh and brought from there the ark of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned upon the cherubim. The two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were with the ark of God. When the ark of the Lord arrived in the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly, that the earth resounded. The Philistines, hearing the noise of shouting, asked, What can this loud shouting in the camp of the Hebrews mean? On learning that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp, the Philistines were frightened. They said, Gods have come to their camp. They said also, Woe to us! This has never happened before. Woe to us! Who can deliver us from the power of these mighty gods? These are the gods that struck the Egyptians with various plagues and with pestilence. Take courage and be manly, Philistines. Otherwise, you will become slaves to the Hebrews as they were your slaves, so fight manfully. The Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated. Every man fled to his own tent. It was a disastrous defeat, in which Israel lost 30,000 foot soldiers. The ark of God was captured, and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Pinehas were among the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
mockery and the scorn of those who around us. You made us a byword among the nations, a laughing stock amongst the peoples. Your face, forgetting our rule and our oppression. For our souls are bowed down to the dust, our bodies are pressed to the earth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to him and kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched the leper and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. Then he said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed that will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. We're very happy uh, this evening that the Holy Croatian, of Croatian Voices, uh, through uh, the help of Brother Noel Vic, although he is attending to his um, congregational obligations abroad, uh, made sure that uh, we had a choir uh, this evening to facilitate and to assist us in this liturgy. See uh, the vice president as well, uh, Sir Rome Momo, also texted me and asked, "No, ano bang kailangan jan? Ano bang kulang?" No? That's uh, the gesture of the Holocaust of Davao College uh, being with us this evening. Um, this evening's mass, as you know, the wake mass is 
headed by the Santa Ana uh, Vicariate uh, with our Vicar Foreign uh, Father Amado Arroyo, Father Mads, who is also with a previous engagement. So he could make it this evening. Nonetheless, last Monday, he made sure that everything was in place and asked me, Father Junar, kung walang pari dun, ikaw na magmimisa. Oh, okay, ikaw na rin mag-homily. Ayan, sige, kaya ako na, sige, no problem. No? Mahal ko naman si Archbishop Nanding. You know? um, for those uh, following us uh, through the DXGN 89.9 Spirit FM, puno yung chapel natin dito sa side chapel ng San Pedro Cathedral. Sa labas din, puno ng tao. Hanggang doon sa Belfry, nandun ang dami-dami natin ngayon. Pwede ba natin palakpakan ng Diyos yung pakita natin pagmamahal ng Archbishop Nanding. Uh, maraming kwento na tayong narinig itong mga uh, nakaraang mga gabi no? tungkol sa buhay uh, si, Arch, si Bishop Jimmy talk about no? passing on a gift and all the, the relations with Bishop Nanding. I have also many stories but I wouldn't share them all to you or maybe a few only kasi baka maiyak ako yung sabi, sabi ko kay Father Eman Father Eman baka hindi ko kaya, maiyak ako no? sabi niya kaya nga ikaw na lang yun no? so tingnan natin anong magandang sinasabi ng uh, scriptures no? ng kwento ng scriptures and maybe see uh, the value of our coming together this evening in prayer uh, in an expression of our love to Archbishop Nanding no? tawag namin yan ni, ni Sister Lu no? Nyor, Nyor, si Nyor kay Nyor Nanding no? it's also nice because the let me focus a little bit on the art of the covenant and Jesus the healer the new in the gospel of today Jesus the new covenant as we say now, the ark of the covenant let's focus on that in the first reading from uh, the first uh, book of Samuel chapter 3 anong kinuwento doon kinuwento doon that the Israelites entered into a war <clears throat> when they entered into war against the Philistines they lost the battle when they lost the battle the elders of the Israelites then Wala pa si Samuel. No? No, biglang nakat yung kwento ni Samuel. Eh. No, we, we, we heard about Samuel. Then biglang may ibang narrative na pinasok sa, sa literature. Uh, these were still the elders of Israel, not yet uh, headed by Samuel. They were probably the, 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 the sons of Eli. But then, they thought, malas tayo. Tinalo tayo ng mga Philistines. But we have a weapon, sabi nila. But we have the Ark of the Covenant. Let's get the Ark of the Covenant and bring the Ark of Covenant with us. With that, we will win the war. They lost already 4,000 men that day. And so they went ahead, got the Ark of the Covenant, and then, ayun na, hiyawa na sila. They shouted at the top of their voices. Narinig na mga kalaban. Yun ang basa kanina ng Dr. Gene. Ano? Narinig na mga natakot ang mga Philistines. Sabi nila, ano ito, ano ito? Ano mayayari? Bakit sigaw ng sigaw ng mga tao? Yumayanig yung lupa sa sigaw nila. And that they have already shouted with the triumph of this battle. And then narinig nila at nalaman that because the Ark of the Covenant was with them. Now the Philistines also knew their own history that with this God that the Israelites believed in, they were able to overcome the Egyptians. Narinig nila, patay tayo nito. No? Kahit na natalo natin sila, ang lakas ng Diyos nila. No? They, they have heard the, the wonders of the Ark of the Covenant, when they brought the Ark of the Covenant that contained the Ten Commandments, the tablets of the Ten Commandments, that they even went to the Promised Land, no? nung narating sila sa the Promised Land, they had to cross a river, the Jordan River, and then they set foot dun sa river with, with uh, the Ark of the Covenant, and the grounds dried up. That's how powerful the accompanying power of the Ark of the Covenant. They went to that, uh, to that land, the Canaan, and then they were faced with the city of Jericho with that big wall. No? Sabi hindi nila kaya to. But anong instruction ng Diyos? You march around that wall seven times in seven days, rather. Each time you bring the Ark. So, ayun. Nauna sila, and then nakasunod yung Ark of the Covenant. Day one, libot lang. Tahimik ha, walang mags magsasalita. Day two, wait for me. Kasi pagka we blow the, 
the trumpet, that's when we make uh, the, the sound and shout of triumph. Day three, four, five, six, and the seventh day came. And then the instructions, blow the trumpets, and they all shouted at the top of their voice, and what happened? The walls of Jericho crumbled down, and that they won the war. The Philistines knew this. The Philistines knew the power of God. And so the Israelites thought that could win their battle. But, but the surprise of surprises is that they lost the battle three times over the first losses that they had. 13,000 lives were lost. Bakit? Kung tatanungin natin, if you follow that story, bakit? Akala ko ba? Oh, powerful yung Ark of the Covenant. Akala ko ba yung mga Israelites, they already have what is the treasured presence of God contained in the Ark of the Covenant. Yung pala, if you look at it, they brought the Ark of the Covenant but they forgot the covenant. They brought that what contained objectively, materially, the Ark of the Covenant, but the relationship with the Lord, they forgot. They treated the Ark of the Covenant like a talisman or amulet, a lucky charm. Nakala nila. Talhin natin to. Ilan ba sa minsan sa atin, ano? nagdarasal na gano'n. Ano? Lord, nandito ako, Lord. Dala ka naman sana ng swerte, baka manalo ko ng last two. Uh-huh. Lord, eto na aking ticket. No? Baka manalo ko ng raffle, manalo ko ng sasakyan. Uh-huh. No? Parang ganun minsan ang treatment natin sa Diyos. We ask for many favors from Him, but we forget the covenant that we have with the Lord. They lost. And that is why the responsor Psalm says it so fittingly, no? Redeem us, Lord, because of your mercy. No longer because of my, my deeds. Lord, sa awa mo na lang, save us. Sa awa mo na lang, save us. In fact, if you continue to read the scriptures in Samuel chapter 6 and onwards, it's beautiful because, okay, they lost the battle. They even lost the Ark of the Covenant. But then what happened next was that uh, they had the plagues and that they couldn't hold on to uh, the Ark of the Covenant because even the temple where they put in, the mga pagans, the, 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 the that image of Dagon or in the temple always fell. Every day it would fell on its face. And so that they said, there's more powerful than our own God and there's even one who could punish us because we are not fit to carry with us to, to, to contain or rather to, to bring with us the Ark of the Covenant. They have to bring that Ark of the Covenant back to the Israelites. When they brought the Ark of the Covenant to the Israelites, they had to even do some uh, kind of like penitential acts, you know, offerings. The same thing the Israelites did for 20 long years according to the scriptures in Samuel. Before they even started, you know, parabang they got back again to that relational uh, aspect of uh, being covenanted with the Lord and not just simply to bring uh, the presence without that relationship. This, in the gospel of today, we are presented with Jesus the healer. St. Thomas Aquinas would say, Jesus is the new covenant. St. Bonaventure would attribute uh, that same image of the new covenant as Jesus in our midst, in the sacrament, especially the Eucharist. Today we're reminded that Jesus offers to us that mercy. And concretely in the gospel today, that is presented to us in the story of the leper who is ostracized from society, isolated, taken all of the dignity as a human being would have normally. Diba pagka yung mga lepers dati, they would bring with them a bell. Ngayon, pagka nakakarinig tayo ng bells, no? ting, 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 ting. Uh, anong naisip agad natin? Oy, ice cream! Lumapit tayo. No, may ice cream. Ting, 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 ting. Ice cream. Lumalapit. Pero sa panahon ni Jesus, pagka narinig mo yung bell, ting, 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 ting. Papalayo ka. Ibig sabihin, if they ring the bell, there's a leper here, please, no? distance from us. 
But what did Jesus do? At that moment when he encountered the leper, the leper said, if you wish so, you can heal me. But Jesus surpassed that expectation by not only regaining the health of that leper, but also touching that leper. What is that, 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 that act of touching the leper? The gesture of touching the leper. Ipinamulat ng Diyos sa kanya na tao rin siya. Hindi lang siya object, hindi lang siya binago, binalik yung kanyang health. Tao ka na. May dignidad ka. Narito na tayo. Magkakasama na tayo. We are now in a community. That is the healing power of Jesus to bring about in that consciousness of that man. He is no longer isolated. He is no longer far from the community. He is now part of the community. In fact, the concern of Jesus, don't, don't, don't spread the news. Go to the priest immediately. Tell him that you can already offer, make the offerings that are the prescribed offerings so that you can now worship the Lord and be part of the community. Pero anong ginawa ng tao? Hindi niya mapigilan ang sarili dahil nga no, binuhay na ng Diyos ang pagkatao niya. That he went around telling and retelling the good news of being healed. Importante pala yung telling and retelling of the good news. Tinanong ko minsan si Archbishop Nanding nun, Senyor, anong sekreto mo? That very patient ka makinig sa mga tao. Uh, simple lang, may mga practical Never dialogue with an empty stomach. Ah, no? Pagka may ka, kailangan mong kausapin, tama ba, uh, Sister Lou? No? Never dialogue with an empty stomach. Pero meron pang talagang malalim niyang sagot. No? Sabi niya, tinanong ko siya, bakit yung mga dialogues fail? And what would make us successful in the future? Yeah, the dialogues fail because there are stories retold differently so that we change the picture of history. By changing the picture of history, we change the picture of what could be in the future. We need, as he was saying to me, to tell the right stories and retell them Anong sakit natin? Kahit na tayo-tayo lang, hindi na yung dialogue. We tell other stories. Alam niyo ba yung bagong kasalanan ngayon? May 11th commandment eh. Hindi na pagka nangumpisal sa akin, Father, gano'n, ito, ay, nakasala ko sa parents ko, gano'n. May pang ano na, pang 11th na. Father, nagmarites ako. Kasalanan na yung magmarites. Nasa listahan na. Pag sinusulat na yung... Father, nagmarites ako. Alam na. Alam na. Ano sabi nung ano, World Youth Day? No? Ano kailangan natin? Sabi ni Cardinal Tagle. No? Kailangan natin, bloggers, hindi mga chismoso-chismosa. Bloggers of the good news. To tell the right stories and to retell those stories. Yan ang natutunan ko kay Nyor Nanding para maging successful ang dialogues. We have to be like the leper. To tell are good stories of our covenant and relationship with the Lord. If you learn something from the scriptures today, to retell the stories of compassion. And if we learn something from the life of Nyor Nanding, is to retell the right stories, to tell the stories of God in our lives. Amen. Let us all stand. Believing in the mercy of the Lord, we approach our Heavenly Father with the assurances that our requests, our prayers will be granted, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church would always fulfill her, her obligation to welcome the outcasts and those who have been shut out of society. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer that our government leaders may be enlightened by the spirit of truth to become true public servants working for the welfare of all with special care for those who are underprivileged. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
that those who carry the burdens of life caused by war, violence, imprisonment, unemployment, hunger, homelessness, persecution, natural disasters, and sickness may experience peace and comfort in the Lord and fear not the future but boldly trust that God will never forsake them. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That those who work with the sick and the aged may be granted with patience and understanding that they need to continue their compassionate care. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all of us gathered today may deepen our compassion and understanding for those who suffer and take inspiration from Jesus who aimed for everyone's freedom, healing, and peace. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Archbishop Emeritus Fernando Capalia, who lived a life of generosity and dedication to God, may be welcomed with love and joy into the heavenly home of the Eternal Father. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We now pray in silence for our individual intentions. Merciful God, you know our needs here and grant our petitions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray now, my dear brothers and sisters, that our sacrifices may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for a good and a good and good of his holy church. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice which your departed servant and bishop, Fernando, while in body, offered to your majesty, for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring him to your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned, and thus those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Archbishop Capalia, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory 
when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. From seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so now we have the courage to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and how blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us all stand. Let us pray. May your merciful kindness, which you have implored, O Lord, benefit the soul of our departed brother, your servant, Bishop Fernando, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Announcement. After the Mass, the Cross Blazers Chorale will render songs for Archbishop Emeritus Fernando R. Capalio. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors for the good deeds go with them. Eternal rest unto Bishop Fernando, O Lord. May he rest in peace. Amen. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. On behalf of Father Mads uh, Arroyo, the Vicar Florin, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today, those who are physically present here and those who have prayed with us uh, through the uh, live stream uh, through TXGN 89.9 Spirit FM. Thank the brother priest here, especially from the Vicariate of Santa Ana, Father Ben Capulong, Father Bong Gonzaga, uh, and a priest from the Santa Ana uh, Vicariate. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be Spirit. to God.
song from the movie Coco 